you be kind enough to say the Pledge of Allegiance for it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, for one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Joanne, we have a roll call, please. Douglas Booty? Andrew Brockway? Here. Kathy Buckley? Here. Michael Hagedorn? Here. Holden Lehman? Here. Ed Marin? Here. Mark Sand? Here. Pauline Stone? Cameron Kucher? Here. It's resolved that the Superintendent of Schools recommends to the Board of Education to approve the agenda. May I have a motion, please? A motion. Make a motion to amend the agenda to separate 8C on page 12 and have a standalone item on the agenda. It is 5 of 13. There is a motion on the floor to amend the agenda, removing 8C um, and turning it to a standalone item. It's on page 5 of 13. Do we have a second? Seconded by Ed. Um, any questions or discussion concerning this? If I can just say why, I just, I, um, something you well, just say, just you know, if it's standalone, we can have a discussion. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Sorry. Um, one thing I would like to know, Mr. Mr. Gearhart, are there any limitations on what we are allowed to talk about concerning? 5C, page 5 of 13. I think to the extent that this appointment was brought forward in pending litigation, I would advise the board not to be discussing pending litigation in public session. Um, is was that the motivation for? It wasn't the motivation I wanted because as I discussed before. <coughs> On a consent agenda to remove an item if I planned on voting mm -hmm. differently than the rest of it, and I think I sent an email to you and to that effect. Um, okay. I wanted to vote differently on that specific item than the rest of them, so that's why I wanted to vote with it. So my vote can be reported differently. Okay. okay. Um, all right, so we are secure within that. Okay. Um, all right. So, the motion to remove. First, I mean, first or second, if no, we need Yep. Know. And we did our discussion. So, we need an all in favor? Aye. 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 Any no's? Any abstains? I abstain. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so, the motion moves. 
when we approve the rest of the agenda? As amended. As amended, okay. Just for clarity, there were five yeses and one abstention. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, it's resolved that the superintendent of schools recommends to this Board of Education to approve this amended agenda. May I have a motion, please? Okay. So who gets it? Mike or Mark? Oh, Ed or Mark. Sorry. Sure. No. Pick one. Second. Thanks. That goes to Ed. Second goes to Mark. All right. All right, and but before we proceed, we actually need to have an unexpected. Oh, I'm sorry. We didn't want to. I guess we can't. Huh? We didn't want to. I'm sorry. I thought you guys. I thought we did. That's what I asked. No, we, we did to amend. To amend. But You're right. 100% correct. 100% correct. Okay, is there any additional discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Noes? Abstains? Um, now we have a, I mean, how do you want to word that, um, executive session? I don't have the standard language in front of me, but, um, our board clerk, I'm sure our attorney knows, but we do need to go into, uh, executive session to discuss, um, the particular appointment, uh, the appointment of a particular person or persons, and, Were there plans to have other discussions at this time? Do we want to also discuss the pending litigation? That's what I was thinking. Yeah, the litigation, uh, Rockway versus Board of Education. Think about being town school district at all, I guess I should say. Or is there another We could start there. You say how long that executive session takes? Or you want to do mm -hmm. presentations and then do it? Or? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do the presentation. Okay, so we do presentations. Let's do presentations. I like that. Okay, let's do presentations and then um, executive session. Okay. All right, excellent. It's no one else. Sorry about the confusion today, guys. All right, um, presentations. All right, starting with presentations, we would like to introduce Mary Swanson. She um, will be presenting on the 2017-2018 Student Achievement Data. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so I'd like to give you a general overview of the um, assessment data for the 3 through 8 assessments and also for the Regents assessments. Um, this slide, it's not so much important to read all of it, but just to recognize that there's a long list there. And what this lists out are some of the major changes that State Ed has made in the testing over the past few years. Um, they've listened to feedback of, across the state and have responded to that feedback by, by changing um, the test in some ways. Uh, significantly, two years ago, uh, they allowed uh, tests to be read as an allowable accommodation on the, the state assessments prior to that. Um, that was not allowed, and they've, they've done some other things to change the tests as well. This past year, they changed the tests from three days down to two days. Uh, three days was a lot of assessments for both ELA and math, six total days of testing, so they brought it down to two. Because of that, they also made some other changes, including changing what's called the scaled score of the test. So the scaled score is a, a score, if you will, that each student gets. The, score, the scale used to go up to 400, plus or minus, now it goes up to over 600. So because of that, and because of some of the other changes that have been made, this year is what's considered a, ba a baseline year for data, meaning that the state has said, we're gonna look at last year's data, but we can't compare it to previous year's data. Um, 
So what we see here are the, um, the levels of threes and fours for the ELA assessments, grades three through eight. Um, and three, threes and fours are what is considered proficient on the test. So the green is showing this past year. And again, the state has said we can't compare from year to year, but the comparisons are here just for your reference. Um, so obviously what we're looking for is that year to year our students are doing better. Uh, we can see grade six and grade eight, um, kind of our standouts there for the past year. And looking across, we see a general, a general trend upward, um, which is what we like to see. This is the same um, information, but looking at the math assessments for grades three through eight. Again, the green is last year, and the numbers are giving the percentage of um, proficiency. Something to note or that stands out is in grade eight, we can see this past year was 11% proficient. Uh, the previous year, you don't see a yellow column, um, and that is because um, that year was the first year that our eighth grade students uh, did not take the eighth grade, the, the, I'll go back. The students who were eligible to take the regions did not take the eighth grade assessment as well. And so um, the students who would generally tend to get the threes and fours didn't take the assessment, which is why you don't see um, any proficient there for 2017. Good question. <clears throat> is, um, do you, so the first four years on there, within standard deviation because that's you're going from zero to <coughs> you are starting at zero are you okay so the graph starts at zero <coughs> so it's relatively level the last two seven and eight is that drop because do you attribute that most to what is it to change in the test or what do you see the drop from the grade seven assessment to the grade well, eight yeah from six to seven and eight um, lower percent than the threes fours and fives um, I mean there are, are there could be many things that um, that we take into account it's it's the test it's the changes in the test it's the cohort in general sometimes we see a class come through where students are just generally stronger um, that that sixth grade that you see with the 46 percent that's an example um, if you look at the um, the fifth grade in the yellow, that's showing. Mr. Anders, could you? I, I just want to point something out. Are you saying why is it dropped from sixth grade to seventh grade? Because I think the, the out, seventh and eighth are much dramatically lower than the so other points. But when you compare, you've got so in seventh grade, you take let's take this group right here. This was then in sixth grade. Right. So they improved in seventh grade. So this group right here in sixth grade, they improved in seventh grade. And this group right here in sixth grade, they improved. In seventh grade, so oh. seventh grade is showing improvement yeah. relative to sixth sure, grade. Sure, I want to point that out. That's so then, in eighth grade, you, you may be asking, why is it why this group decreased, this group, this group goes here, and then this group goes here, and you already talked about why there's a difference there because we have accelerated kids taking the Regents exam in eighth grade, and therefore. Um, and last year and this year, most kids didn't take it because we don't feel like we're testing our kids. We decided that having our kids spend all the time testing is not like spending all the time learning. Right. I hope that answers your question. Sorry. <laughs> So looking at the Regents data, um, this is showing the, um, the pass rate and the mastery rate for um, each of the Regents. Looking back across the years, and um, you know, our students do well with the Regents, and what we're looking for is to see that we are, um, that we are either maintaining or we are raising the percent of students who are, um, who are passing the Regents or who are re reaching mastery. So I'll just flip through these um, and you'll be able to see that, oops, sorry.
global has changed. So uh, last year was the first year that there was what was called the um, the transition regions exam, and this is showing the um, the pass rate and the mastery rate, which um, you know that, that's excellent results on that. What do they mean by a transis transition? The global was. I can explain. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, okay. so the transition exam was it moved from a, a different type of test mm -hmm. into a new format. So there's more writing involved in this one. This transition test. So basically, it's in between the new global test that's coming out that we have to take next year. Mm -hmm. and everybody in the state should start taking that exam, and kind of that tweener in between. So it's got some of the aspects of the previous test and the new test to kind of you know, roll into that, that new test. So it doesn't see such a discrepancy, you know, because if, if you look at the uh, geometry uh, test, that was a change test. Mm -hmm. So you can see, you know, sometimes that does make a big difference if you just change the total test. Mm -hmm. So this was a transition factor where they'd walk in and they had different aspects from each test to kind of roll into the next year. So next year we have to take that, the other global 10 test. What kind of modifications do they have for special, um, for like 504 and IEP for if you have more written? So they don't have them in their IEPs, they're okay. written in the IEP, whatever their IEP asks for, that's mm -hmm. what we need to give them on that, on that state exam. Okay. Yeah. All right, thanks. Thank you. Okay, so I got a follow up on that. <clears throat> so with the transition having more written component to it now, how do they mitigate and advantage that? the students with a better ELA capacity would have. Because let's say you did well on the global, because it wasn't as much writing, but conceptually you understand the global much much better. But now, if I have a deficiency in, in ELA, and I go take it the next year, I may not be able to show my my knowledge base. So how, how do they adjust for that? And that's gonna be that's gonna be the tough transition. It's a lot, like, one of the big aspects of a new new exam is they call it enduring issues. So what the teachers, students are going to have to write about is these different issues that come up and they're going to prompt them and they have to write about it. So it is alignment a lot more to an ELA exam, which is, is definitely going to be that factor of working towards, you know, that literacy background and building vocabulary right. and comprehension. And it's, it's, that's, that's why they do the transition to try to get students assimilated to those type of questions. Well, let's build on that, Matt. Yeah. When you see the school districts around the country yeah. that have showed the most improvement essentially dramatic improvement in their scores, they have a school-wide K through 12 focus on reading. And when you, when you teach everybody to read better, their math scores improve, their social studies scores improve, and you see that across the world. So a lot of people are like, well, how come we're not giving a lot of support for math? You are by teaching them how to read, because there's so much, there's so much to it. It's just getting through the vocabulary and just the number of words per minute help you get through the test and you achieve at higher levels. It, again, if you just have a total school-wide focus on literacy. It's really building that capacity around the content and academic language. Um, so building on what Ed said, are there any classes or programs available for people that are weaker in ELA to get up to speed? So oh, absolutely. Their test will be um, or their ability to take the test will be on par with the cohort. Absolutely. We have uh, support classes, we have AIS classes, and we can put them in to give them that support. So when we get the grades back, especially for the transition exam, those students that are sitting at that level one and two, mm -hmm. they're placed in AIS, <coughs> global AIS ELA class. They get support every single day in remediation. Um, so we have those responses and interventions in there and in place. Yeah. Sorry, man. Last few slides show um, attendance. As so you can see across the years, that's one of the things that we've been tracking and, and trying to see what we can do to get our students here each and every day. Another thing we track is discipline. Uh, and you can see that referrals have gone down over the past few years. 
and you'll notice that 2014-15 was higher than the other ones, and um, you know the, the structure and the way that, that things were done well, was different then, and so um, I think some changes were made in 15-16, and we can see that we um, have less referrals. Um, may I, what kind of changes were made from 14, 15, 15, 16 procedurally that would result in lower discipline rates? Uh, I think it was the way that the way that we looked at things. I think there were some changes in administration. There were some changes in just um, you know the overall structures. I don't know. Yeah, I think it provided more support for those students that are struggling. So we have you know our BHSM on campus now. We have counseling. We have the psychologists on campus. We have positive behavior support systems in place to help students, you know, deal with these aspects. We have counselors going to classrooms and dealing with students on behavioral and mental capacity. So there's a lot of things that are in place that we've done in the last couple of years to make sure these students are mentally, their capacity is, you know, socially and emotionally is there too. And that's a big aspect right now. There's also, just to chime in, um, ELT had a lot to do with that, I think, too. Um, just really, creating that structure where we had those, um, you know, the first year we did it, we had some after school programs at the middle high school level. The elementary has the BAS programs. Um, just really bringing, connecting teachers to kids and developing those relationships, I think helps teachers manage kids in the classroom better, um, increase those relationships, and then we see a decrease in, um, in the discipline issues that we have. And Mike, that was one of the theories we wrote into the grant. And that was the, the mindset change that you know administration has been around for a while, uh, seeing that change from 14, 15, and just the approach and building those relationships has been exceptionally valuable in keeping our kids. Our goal was to have our kids in school more often and not being in trouble. Um, and we thought that then they would achieve at higher levels. <coughs> and you can see that it's, it's steadily gone up, and, and from 16, 17 to 17, 18, there was not a significant difference. Um, when you're looking at our number of graduates, just one or two students can, can change those percentages. Did we have, did we have, sorry, did we have the ACT sc scores? We, we didn't have I do have them. Um, I did not put them in a slide, but I can do that and then, and then share it. Um, all of this, all of those went up as well. Um, and the composite, the composite score, the overall score stayed the same, but in in each of the different areas, um, they went up. You know, we'll just put that into we'll put that into the portal for the work to see. But it was just another really good indicator of uh, the hard work that people. They're both SAT and the ACTs? No, we don't get an SAT report. I, I've never gotten, I never received an SAT. I always receive an ACT report. Because I know it's in the counselor's statements of information. So. The counselors may have, but I, yeah. I haven't. Uh, we, can look, we can look for it. Just a general question. Since you mentioned that the testing went from three days to two days, mm -hmm. was that for all grades? Yes. Um, I imagine that the impact, really, how was the impact with the third graders? Can, can, I, can, yeah. can I jump in on that? Because yeah. there's an important point here. So it is wonderful to think that they went from, the state took a whole day of testing off. It's wonderful to think. But they had the same number of questions in the exam. So from a third grader, oh. it's nice, it's only two days. But for like a fifth grader, a sixth grader, there were fifth graders and sixth graders that knew you just crammed this massive three-day test onto me in two days. There were, there were people, um, that kids that said that to the administrator. So it has gone from three to two, that is nice, but we think they should be condensing the number of questions as well. But there are, there's other feedback, I wanted to share that, go ahead. Okay, so, so this, that this is my question. So how did, how, did the, the, how was it impacted going from three to two days so Mr. Manage was talking about the same amount of questions. Were the questions the same rigor or were they changed so that you could tr so that it could compensate for the two days versus the three days? I'll refer I'll I'll go to the experts that sit in there and see the kids, but I know that they were having a hard time having kids. They also you 
you have extended time. There's no time limit now anymore. And kids, so it's great, there's no time limit now. Kids were taking a long time to right. take. To, it's very, it's, I mean, you guys know, and when I heard from other school districts and one of the committees I'm on at the state level, they're talking about trucking and pizza to get these kids because they're still taking the exam. So it doesn't sound like a really great model and something to build on. But, I, you know, go ahead and, you, how did our kids, what were some of the success stories? Obviously the data is kind of, kind of a success story. But what was the what was the feedback that you guys saw, you know, in our hallways? Um, and I'll let the former principal speak to it as well. But um, you know, something that I noticed is across the years with a th with a three day test, the the first day the kids are all in, the second day, you know, they're working, and by the third day, it's you know they've they've had enough, and so. The, the results that you see on that third day might not necessarily be what you would see if they took it in, in two days instead. So that, that's one big difference. Um, not having the test timed anymore, I think, let stress off of a certain population of students, but I think also added some stress to those students who are going to work all day and they're, you know, until they're finished and they're finished to, um, to what they think is, or, you know, perfection from, for some students. So those are some differences, and I don't know, Sarah, what you noticed. Yeah, I would say along that same line, and we had some kids, you know, we start around 9.45 in the morning, and some kids, you know, we have a process where we have to give them, you know, a structured lunch to get them through the test, and then they come back at it after lunch, and it t makes for a long day for these eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds, and 10-year-olds mm -hmm. to be sitting down trying to, you know, do their best. And certainly, you know, not the ideal situation is to try and, you know, assess where their learning is at. I had three students with disabilities take the test in my office last year, Humblin had, and it was a real struggle for them. One, it was too difficult, broke down crying, a couple times came back. Another one was just so diligent, had that work ethic, was determined to get through for hours out there and took at least an hour to write one sentence. So that score is obviously not going to reflect that kid's work ethic, but it, they struggle a lot with it, just that certain population. And at the lower grades, you guys use a star web, right, to have more frequent evaluation. How, how in your opinion, how does this, how do these results compare to the star web evaluations that you get on a continuous basis? You look at both sets of grades, if you will, on the same student. Is is there really confident equal correlation, or does it vary a lot? Um, it, I would say that in general it correlates. Um, I'm not sure I would use the word like confident correlation, but in in general you do see those trends that students who score lower on the star tend to get the ones and and twos, and those who score higher get the three. What's nice though is that when the kids are taking the STAR test, it'll give us a report that breaks down the skills that they're weak in so that teachers can get that immediate feedback and start working on those skills to, to boost their overall performance. Whereas with the states, you take it, you see how your kids have done, you can look at some of the sample questions and the exemplars and, and kind of get a feel for it. But truly, I think that our local assessments really give us a lot better information. Thank you. Are there any more questions? Right, thank you very much. time in two directions and I'll give a couple other quick little updates but one of the um, components we always start out our budget season with is what are we seeing from special education and I know 
that our assistant superintendent has um, done some really nice um, analysis, and um, she's going to just share with you. Just a quick update on special education enrollment and data. Uh, this year, we have 321 students with disabilities compared to 306 last year. We have uh, 38 preschool students compared to 29 last year. And our Section 504 plan students uh, decreased from 129 to 122. But those numbers are always fluctuating, of course. That's just a point in time. Uh, for example, in the last three weeks, we've had seven students with disabilities transferred into Beekman Town, and nobody's left. So it's continually changing. We've had a lot of transfers this year alone. Um, as far as our most recent state education department data, it shows a lot of improvements in special education. Our graduation rate went up from 52% to 69% for students with disabilities. Our dropout rate went down from 32% to 15%. That was big. Uh, the number of students we have in the general education setting the majority of the day increased. We also uh, met or exceeded state targets for high school ELA and math performance. Our suspension rate, our students served in separate schools. Right now we have eight students at CBES. And also our parent involvement. So we had over 98% um, of parents report that uh, the school had facilitated their engagement and involvement in improving services for their students. So those were all positive and strengths for the district. Uh, of course, we want to continue to improve and the goals we're continuing to work on. We want to decrease classification rate. We're always looking at that. Um, all, and also the dropout rate. We always continually look at that um, population in high school. And then increasing our time and least restrictive environment for students with disabilities, both school age and preschool students. It's an area we want to continue to improve on. It's hard to decrease the classification rate when you're having sevens and eight. And, and everyone's in. coming in. Everyone's coming <laughs> in. Yes. Yeah. Already classified. Right. So how's our building capacity with this growth? Pardon? Are we okay building-wise with the growth? We are full. Um, and we have a variance from two rooms at the middle school. But we are serving everyone right now, yes. Um, hey, Polly. Um, can you explain the difference between um, why our, um, our graduation rate and our dropout rate? What is happening to those people that aren't graduating or dropping out? Because obviously those numbers don't add up to 100%. Yeah, those numbers, again, those are not huge populations. A couple of kids make a big difference. Mm -hmm. um, but so while we're improving at, we have students in our, for example, our 51 parallel curriculum, we're really getting those struggling students that struggle with content through those programs and through those regents exams, and they're getting that diploma. So that graduation rate is increasing. But at the same time, we have groups of students that, you know, we've, we're trying to engage in that we've lost um, and sometimes we can get them back and, and other times we don't but it's an ongoing process and we worked on a quality improvement plan last school year for the, to target that dropout rate because it was so high at one point uh, and put a lot of different things in place to try and increase the engagement of that specific population and so often it's the students that aren't necessarily just struggling academically but also are having emotional behavioral issues as well I guess I wasn't clear on that. Um, you said last year the graduation rate was 69% and the dropout rate, did it decline 15% or was it 15%? It declined, so. Okay. Yeah. I misunderstood. Yes. Yeah. That makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. So another piece for budget preparation is you've probably been watching some of the New York State um, political fallout from the election in November, but for the first time in a long time, the Democrats have controlled the Senate and the Assembly. So there's some potential that that is um, going to benefit um, unions or schools. Um, you know, we have our fingers crossed. Um, there's another. Uh, discussion point that's been going around the state, uh, state legislature for a long time 
and that is would the legislature fully fund foundation aid and foundation aid is that aid that's um, built on the number of kids that come in right now there's some formula political formula that doesn't correlate to really much of anything I can't I wouldn't tell you that anybody can figure <laughs> it out and explain why it makes sense foundation aid formula does make sense and it looks like we're underfunded in the foundation. We're one of the few schools in this area that are underfunded in foundation aid. And it looks like to the tune of seven hundred to eight hundred thousand dollars. So if that ever, if they ever decided to fully fund the foundation aid formula, that could um, certainly help us. Another big budget driver you're going to see is our health insurance is going to probably increase ten to eleven percent this year which is already a huge number. If you remember last year, it increased 26%. So if there was ever a time to level up on foundation aid, that could certainly help us. Uh, we Last year, I'd say we were really gloom and doom because there, this isn't an election year. There's nobody running for election, so there's no real, ever a real need on those non-election years to, to, to kind of you know secure votes or whatever it is that politicians do with money. <coughs> but it does look like uh, the economy has ticked up um, the stock brokers in New York City that get the big bonuses that drive our, a lot of our economy and the tax rolls, the, their bonuses were, were, were rich and that money comes into the coffers. So there's a lot of good things that are in play. Um, optimistic, I guess, we're optimistic. Um, but again, there's, no, there's nothing that tells us, hey, these folks are running and they've got, they're gonna try to deliver. But all that being said, we have our fingers crossed. We hope it's gonna be better than we thought it would be last year. Uh, but we'll know more January, the governor's giving his state of the state and budget address uh, combined, and we obviously watch that and keep a close eye on that. One other item before I hand it over to Mike, I'm going to see Mike some time from a, as a community member who wanted a little bit more information on our CAP project. Mike drives our operations committee. It is our school calendar this year? We had a snow. We've had two snow days before I think before Thanksgiving, right? Certainly before Christmas. Um, or one, one snow day for one group and two snow days for another group. Um, luckily this year we booked five snow days, so we may, if we have any issue, we may have to take the last day off of April break, which is a Monday, and utilize that as a school day. And we also, one of the snow days was on a professional development day, and we can't give up those professional development days because we really only have, we have two that are very standard and you don't get a lot of development, and it's a lot more of it, it's just, uh, entering school and getting ready and doing a lot of mandated uh, training. So on this PD day, which it looks like it's going to be January 18th, um, we will we will have to send a note home to parents and saying, sorry, this day is is a P, is a professional development day, and you're going to have to find daycare. Um, and we're going to just because we we receive four of those a year, we we have to use it. Um, I think that's that's it for me but I wanted to give Mike some time he sat in on the capital project update yeah so um, December 5th um, I was uh, part of uh, an update we had two members from uh, Tetra Tech uh, our new construction manager UW Marks attending by teleconference and um, you know our board or our um, district uh, memberships, such as Dan Mannix and Mr. Scott, and Dan Noonan, and so um, we wanted to get an update on you know how things are going there. And phase one, such as the parking lot, um, is obviously complete. But in the spring, they do intend to do a little bit more landscaping when everything thaws. And then that will be officially complete. Phase two was, uh, part of it was the tank of the bus garage, which is also done. And they also gave us a little update on the, on the um, capital outlay project, which involved the windows at um, Cumberland Head, um, which is also uh, just wrapping up. Um, but really, the, the bulk of the meeting was discussion, discussing phase three, which is uh, all the items that um, came over bid from uh, the first time around. And <clears throat> so we started with reviewing, you know, all the items, and it was kind of a lengthy discussion uh, about, you know, keeping all the main pillars that we had 
uh, presented a long time ago, um, and all those main pillars are remaining. And there was a little discussion about each and how, um, for example, the LGI, the large group construction room, um, was still projected to be fairly expensive, and so they did some creative, you know, re-engineering uh, Tetra Tech and our um, construction manager to change some things so it would take um, a lot a lot less money off of that expense to keep it in the project. Um, and um, and then we reviewed the schedule, which uh, I'm really glad to report is, is looking good and we're looking on schedule. Um, uh, Tetra Tech and UW Marks uh, were noting that uh, yesterday they were predicting to get together and, and have final estimates um, on the expenses of the scope of our project. And then um, come January, um, they were going to meet with us and um, the district representatives and present to us again uh, about their final estimates and recommendations on scope. And, um, and so we're on target to um, get bids um, or advertise for bids um, in mid-January and then really um, they would require walkthroughs the various companies that are going to present um, or make bids to us and we're, you know, what happened last time is we were so late is all the construction companies um, already had a lot of work lined up so the bids came in very high and uh, Getting it out there early is going to help us tremendously, and, and so um, I have February 13th as a date that started um, as opening the bid process, um, and we hope to be able to recommend um, or award bids uh, by the end of February. So that's really important and right on schedule. Um, we also discussed, you know, um, the, that Sheehan, who did the parking lot, is going to start early May or mid-May on the fields, and um, you know, they did a lot of prep work up until it became impossible with the change in the weather. Um, and we also talked about having the lighting for that field uh, being budgeted into the scope of this um, capital project. So. There was some talk of having boosters, but then we realized that could cost um, quite a bit of money. That would be difficult for the boosters to, to um, raise. <coughs> so so uh, everything's looking good um, as far as the capital project. Moving on to audit committee. Okay. Oh, we jumped right over I'm so <laughs> sorry, Kevin. I'll go now, I guess. <laughs> um, there's some stuff that uh, is carried over from last month, too, due to that not being presented last month. Uh, it's Cumberland Head Elementary School. You have fourth and fifth grader students who went to SUNY Plattsburgh to enjoy a concert put on by the college students. Um, they had a mega concert at the school, which was a huge success. Um, I believe that was the Beacon Town Elementary and Cumberland Head joined here. Um, Cumberland Head is fortunate enough to have Love on a Leash visit often to share their therapy dogs with their students. Um, there's a fluffy chow that snorts when it breathes, and it's a crowd favorite. The Culture Club uh, is a committee devoted to planning ac activities to unify the building, has given staff secret buddies through, um, through the year. The secret buddy gives their person a little treat or nice message in their mailbox every <coughs> so often. Each grade level is also provided dinner once a month, is providing dinner once a month to our custodians to say thank you. A cookie exchange is up for this month for Christmas. Uh, several teachers have attended Hope Changes Everything in Lake Placid. These teachers learn strategies to use for students experiencing trauma and mental health issues. Those teachers will be presenting um, at the December faculty meeting, bringing back what they learned to other staff members. The emotional wellness team continues to support teachers with ideas, strategies, and behavior plans with, for students who have experienced trauma. Staff remain committed to the, um, further their knowledge in this area. Kindergarten is hosting a family gingerbread making event. First grade will also invite families to create ornaments with their children. 
The Polar Express is being performed by third grade, third grade students for the entire school as well as families. The third grade positive bus committee is ringing the Salvation Army bell tonight at Target under the direction of Mrs. Holzer and Mrs. Beatty. Second grade will be singing carols at Lake Forest Nursing Home and then again for families at CHES. Teachers are planning their, ho their own holiday cookie exchange and gift giving auction for their own holiday fun. And then Eagle Pride Prowls will start in the new year. This is a peer mentoring program intended to build connections and community, providing um, mentees that support as well as give mentors leadership opportunities. We are ex excited to see the impact this has on our students at our elementary school here at Beekman Town. They had a successful parent-teacher conferences uh, last week. Mrs. Paquette is in the process of compiling numbers and data in relation to the turnout. The fourth graders attended a f the field trip, same as Cumberland Head, to SUNY Plattsburgh to watch the kids' concierto. Uh, on the third graders will be attending Pete and the Cat at Flint Theater in Burlington, Vermont today. The school collectively brought in over 800 non-perishable food items to benefit the Beekman Town Hall food drive. This effort was organized by uh, the student council. Um, Singing Santa will be coming next week. These the kids are always excited for his visit. And select fifth graders will be car caroling at local nursing homes this next week. And then, just like at Cumberland Head, they'll be decorating holiday ornaments as well as buddy groups next week at the middle school. You know, the first Eagle Pride assembly was a success. The principal cabinet, consisting of eighth graders from all teams, met this um, last month to have discussed Eagle Pride, the Eagle Pride assembly. Seventh and eighth grader student, eighth grade students attended a presentation done by the North Country Honor Flight. For early release day, November 29th, they followed a block schedule where groups rotated to three stations, a counseling presentation on the importance of having a positive attitude um, by Mr. Johnson and Mr. King, a teamwork activity in the gym facilitated by Mrs. Heilman and Mr. Fish, and then a goal setting activity facilitated by Mrs. Nelson herself. Today we had a mix it up day in the middle school cafeteria in an effort to foster a positive school culture and inclusion. The lunch period seatings were mixed up. Mrs. Kel Ms. Kelly, Mr. King, Mrs. Nelson, and the National Honor Society students played, planned this day. There was a photo booth, game tables, and conversation cards at each table. The high school students um, were acting as table facilitators. Parent-teacher conferences went smoothly in the middle school, and they were well attended. Teachers were able to meet with parents and groups. There have been two parent advisory committee meetings. Seven parents were in attendance at last night's meeting and they identified positive aspects of the middle school and areas for growth, as well as feedback on parent-teacher conferences. The Winter Wonderland Week is next week and there will be winter themed days. On the 20th, the middle school has a field trip to the Strand and the students will be watching a performance of Elf, Elf Junior by the Drama Club and view the film Wonder. The spelling bee will be December 13th in the morning, that's this week. And a happy note for school portraits, the middle school signed a multi-year agreement with Life Touch in November, and it was negotiated that instead of the traditional incentives for portraits, the middle school will now receive 25 complimentary portrait packages that will be distributed to families who are unable to purchase portraits. Those 25 will be distributed for the next couple of years. Um, some families will receive portrait vouchers this year. Over in the high school, Students have attended um, quite a few college visits to Paul Smith's, Clarkson, Potsdam, St. Lawrence, Canton, and North Country College. This helps create an added awareness of college readiness and experiences for those who plan on attending college after they graduate. The hosting of Temple Grandin back in October gave the high school an immense opportunity for 500 students, parents, teachers, and community members to see the wonderful agriculture, technology, and CSE <coughs> programs. It was quite an honor to have Temp Mrs. Temple here herself. The district hosted a suicide prevention summit for neighboring district administrators to discuss ways of being proactive in suicide prevention techniques. Teachers have attended several professional development opportunities, and uh, Mr. Bazzio has met with each teacher returning from their professional development to discuss how we can embed what they learned throughout the whole school. Teachers will be presenting what they learned um, 
at the upcoming faculty meeting, which they had today in the high school, and department meetings. Our students with soccer, or athletes with soccer, volleyball, football, and cross country have all seen great success in the past fall season um, when they attended sectionals, and they have positively represented our campus on the acad um, athletic aspect of it. And then just from a high school perspective, we're bringing back the environmental club. I don't know if this was brought up at the last meeting, but this is a great to prove how much we care about the community, and we will not, we'll try not to make the board's job too difficult. In this club, we plan on making recycling efforts around our school more intense, and we'll hopefully present at um, more upcoming meetings throughout the year. We just presented today, actually, for one of the meetings, <coughs> or for the faculty meeting. We also hope to make our school a certified green school by the end of the year. And um, the high school student council is also looking forward to the upcoming holidays. Next week we have a four day week and we are planning on to have a winter fun day on the Friday, or Thursday before break. Um, we're also bringing, joy, bringing back joy with a holiday spirit week, especially for uh, mental well-being for high school students. It's nice for them to have fun doing something not educational based during an immense times. Um, intense times due, due to mid midterms, finals, or just getting in the needed curriculum before we have our longer winter break. So that would, our spirit week is going to consist of character day where students can embody their favorite character. Tuesday will be mismatch day, they can just have fun mismatching their whole outfit. Thursday is going to be decades day, that's always fun to have a blast from the past. We have all decades in the 1900s. And then for the um, last day of the week, which is going to be the Thursday, we have an ugly sweater day, which should be fun. And that's pretty much it. Thank you very much. Uh, Cameron, did you say that a couple of um, students organized a drive with the Salvation Army? Um, I don't know if I did. <laughs> Sorry. There's a lot to say. You said a lot. <laughs> um, like regarding like the coat drive? Yeah. I don't know, but do we have, I believe. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we just brought, um, this past month, we've been working with the Salvation Army to bring in coats and winter clothing for people in need through the Salvation Army. And we also did a food drive, Thanks. which was quite nice. Mm -hmm. Very good, thank you. Next, um, now it's my turn, we'll move on to committees. Um, it, um, audit committee this month. We reviewed and discussed our October 2018 financial reports as submitted by the district treasurer. Um, we also um, did um, an overview, overview and received an update on our food service program. Um, as of today, we, for the month of October, we have served 29,591 breakfasts. 32,103 lunches. Um, I'm really, really proud to um, share with everyone that that's a 2% increase um, for the, um, for the, um, the, the each, 2% increase each for the first two months of our program. Um, that's absolutely outstanding and I'm very, very grateful for all the effort everyone's put forward. We also discussed um, payments for our site work position of our capital projects um, that went out in October. We discussed the main building parking lot, fuel tank installation at the bus garage, out, our outdoor lighting throughout the, throughout the district. Um, um, we also um, uh, discussed some ways that we could possibly increase the amount of um, lunches and possibly breakfasts throughout the middle school. Our next meeting will be January 3rd, 7.45 a.m. All right. Thank you. I would like to go because it's really not um, We're going to go back to um, the beginning of our agenda. We're going to start with number two. <coughs> Well, it'd be nice if, if um, do we have anything first and then do that last? Do what last? The executive session? Sure. The reason, I mean, if Mr. Connors is going to join the board and they have an executive session and report information that he's not aware of. Okay. Yep. All right. It's 
It's resolved that the Board of Education appoint Jeremy Connors to the Board of Education effective as of 12-11-2018 until 5-21-2019. May I have a motion, please? A motion. May I have a second? Second. Did you get that, Jimmy? Yes. Okay. Um, <coughs> any questions or discussion? Um, this is not, my vote isn't against Jeremy. Um, I don't believe that the school followed policy 2310 or 2150 when making this appointment and there's a committee of three people that met and didn't interview all 10 applicants as required by policy. Um, so, and furthermore, the committee wasn't um, publicized. It was in the newspaper that it was meeting. So therefore, I plan on voting no, um, just for those reasons. Okay. Um, just so the community goes, we did not actually have a committee. We had three board members that volunteered to do the interviews. There were 11 applicants. Um, every um, application that was sent or letter of intent was sent to the district was sent to every single board member for their review. Um, the, we uh, were hoping to select a top five. We ended up with seven. Well, could you clarify? So each board member was given the opportunity to choose their top, top five, five candidates. candidates. Um, we tallied up the can how the um, the voting went. We ended up having ties, so we actually had seven candidates to interview. Um, for personal reasons, one could not attend. Another had to cancel at last minute. So we did actually end up interviewing five people. They were absolutely outstanding. Everyone that applied was outstanding. I hope that everyone considers um, running in the future or contributing to our district in some way or another through volunteer. Um, and it just so happens that the consensus of the three volunteers that interviewed the um, candidates would like to bring Jeremy Connors forward to the Board of Education. Can I respond? Um, at what point are we talking about litigation and not just discussing? Well, the motion is okay. to vote. Talk about the motion. Okay. Um, policy 2150 says that prospective candidates shall be interviewed by at least three members of the Board of Education. After all applicants have had an equal opportunity to be interviewed, mm -hmm. the board shall select an applicant. All of you just said yourself, right. all were not interviewed. Absolutely. Read the part about all have an opportunity. opportunity to be interviewed. Yeah. Did they have an opportunity? Were Absolutely. Every letter. Are we crossing the line? No. Okay. No. Every letter of intent was sent to every board member. Every single person that sent in the letter had the opportunity to be interviewed. Sure. So, so can I, can I make yeah, some go ahead. All right, so if, if we're, like my job, my business, if I'm hiring someone or if we're hiring teachers, we have a, if we get 100 applicants, right, we realistic to interview 100, right? So, so everyone has the opportunity by, by process. So you, you start looking at the candidates that all of them that's there, and in this case, the opportunity was given by allowing everybody to see everybody's uh, either resume that they offer, stuff that they offered, and then just at a course of action, every person was given the opportunity to provide their five top choices, and out of those collective five top choices, the ones that got the most votes are the ones that got the physical interview. So, so the opportunity was given. I think it's unrealistic that if we have 100 people put in documents that we're going to interview 100 people face to face. So that's the spirit of the policy, and I think we followed it to its. I mean, that nature. may be the spirit of the policy, but the plain language says that all shall have an equal opportunity to be interviewed. Yes, that was yeah. given. And, 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 and how parsing, was that it par it doesn't, oh, I'm sorry. Parsing okay. the application pool into five people isn't part of this policy. It doesn't say the board shall narrow it down to five and then interview whoever they want. It doesn't have to. Mm -hmm. Well, it I says give the opportunity. Okay. Give the opportunity. Okay, I respect you. Okay, that's okay. That's it's okay, okay for you to disagree. It's all right. That's all right. Okay, so the motion, I, question on the table is. So is there any other questions or discussion concerning um, moving Jeremy forward? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, aye, aye. Noes? No. Abstains? 
this resolution passes. So made the motion. Mike. Ed. That's right, Mike. Oh, that's right. Thank you. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Aside 10 minutes for public comment. If someone from the community would like to come forth to the board, we do, um, this would be your opportunity. Um, we do have some rules and, and policies and procedures concerning um, how uh, public comment is run, and Mr. Marin is going to be kind enough to explain that. Is, is anybody coming up to public comment? There's another yes. public comment at the end. That's what the Absolutely. Is. All right. Moving on to number six minutes. It's resolved that the superintendent of schools recommends to the Board of Education to approve the following minutes. May I have a motion, please? All motion. Second. All second. Any question or discussion? I just have a comment. Um, I stated on 11-13 that I would leave the executive session if there was a motion. There was no motion. Um, so that's all I wanted to add to uh, the comment that I refuse to listen to Mr. Gerhardt's advice. I'm not, ask I'm not asking for an amendment. All right. Any other questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Noes? No. Abstains? Resolution passes. It's resolved that the Superintendent of Schools recommends to the Board of Education to approve the CSE, CPSE, and 504 recommendations dated December 12th, I'm sorry, December 11th, 2018. May I have a motion, please? Motion. May I have a second? Second. Question or discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Noes? Abstains? Resolution passes. It's resolved that the Superintendent of Schools recommends to the Board of Education that the following personal, <coughs> personnel resolutions on this consent agenda, resignations, appointments, retirements, be and are hereby approved. Should I have said modified? Or, uh, no, because the agenda was already approved. All right, so. Uh, may I have a motion, please? A motion. Second? Second. Okay. <coughs> Any question or discussion? All in favor? Uh, Noes? Abstains? Resolution passed. Abstain just because I haven't seen the files. Okay, okay. excellent. And <coughs> resolution passes.
It's resolved that the superintendent of schools recommends to the Board of Education that the following miscellaneous resolutions on this consent agenda, use of facilities for Beaton Town Central School District youth basketball teams and memorandum of agreement with pay the payroll clerk be and are here I hereby approved. May I have a motion, please? Motion. I'll second. And who's the motion? Marcel. Okay. All right. Those are done. All right. All in favor? Aye. Noes? Abstains? Resolution passes. It's resolved. Oh. Do we have to eight seen two main seats a separate item now under on the personnel? Do you want to do yeah. that now? Sure. Yeah, okay. well, because it's personnel, and so we'll go with the financial. Yeah, fine. I just want to do that at the end. Okay. that the superintendent of schools recommends to the Board of Education that the following personnel resolution on this agenda appointments be and are hereby approved. May I have a motion, please? Motion. May I have a second? Second. Hold in a second. Any question or discussion? For a point of uh, clarity, I don't know if Mr. Beebe was here and that's a carved up. You might not know. Are you familiar with what happened? Um, I assume we're talking about uh, AE on this? No. No. 8C. No. What's that? So, so the 10th Parliament was carved off the agenda. Um, and, that, and that's what we're voting on now. I just want you to be aware because I don't know this was discussion earlier. Good point. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, is there any questions or discussion? Um, I'm planning on voting now just for the reasons that I stated in That's what okay. we're meeting in executive session, or what you will be meeting in executive session. Okay. All right. Um, um, I'm also just going to abstain on this one, just because I'm okay. not familiar with that. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Noes? No. Abstains? Resolution passes. resolved that the superintendent of schools recommends to the Board of Education that the following resolutions on this consent agenda, financial reports, transfers, and grant awards be and are hereby approved. Um, may I have a motion, please? Is that you, Mark? Yep. Okay. All second. Mark, and then second for Mike. Yep. Any question or discussion? May we have a roll call, please? Douglas Beebe? Yes. Andrew Brockway? Yes. Kathy Buckley? Yes. Jeremy Connors? Yes. Michael Holt? Michael Hagedorn? Yes. Holden Lehman? Yes. Ed Marin? Yes. Mark Zan? Yes. Colleen Stone? <coughs> All right, so we're off to additional items. sent out an email concerning um, January yeah. Yeah. Is it yeah, that's a, uh, isn't that um, West Side Ballroom? Yes. Um, yeah, so the deadline to let me know if you're going is December 21st, which is next week. Um, I think the event is January 21st. Um, I'm sorry, Tony. Oh, okay. um, it's January 10th. 
Okay, it's January 10th. I believe that's a dinner to put on mm -hmm. by the Harris Beach Hall. It's evidence based learning. The work of John Hattie. Hattie. Yeah, John Hattie. Six o'clock social dinner and program at 6 30. Um, you have a question? Yeah, I have a question. Um, I've requested several invoices uh, for legal services rendered, and I was just wondering, as a board member, when I'd be able to receive that information regarding Ross Piscatelli and any findings that he may have presented to the board. I see Jay Gervin's here. Maybe he can shed some, shed some light on that as well. All right, we're, we're going to finish this discussion first. Okay. good. All right, so um, if you um, intend on attending, um, it is a dinner. They're serving halibut. What did you say? I was like, actually, anyway. so um, email or call Joanne by the 21st of December. And please um, let her know what your intentions are concerning that particular. It's, it's chicken, salmon, or strip steak. Okay, chicken, salmon, or strip steak. Um, yes, you did request information. Yes. Okay. Um, and I let you know that it would be presented to full board. What, what would be presented to full board? That information. So Ross Piscatelli did not meet with the board already? Uh, that's not what I said. You asked for the lump sum dollar figure. Okay. And we will discuss that. And I'm asking what findings Mr. Piscatelli made or recommended to the board? Um, I absolutely um, agree that you should have that. When, sh when can I expect that? Um, we need to go one step at a time. And right now, let's us get to executive session. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Um, okay. Go ahead. Um, just, just a very, all requests received by all members are, are addressed and looked at to be responded to. So just just so you know everything. No, so we've been out since July though and I right. feel like I have to submit FOIA requests to get information. So No, it's it's not about that, it's about uh, uh, being able to get all the information collectively package. So so we'll be have some of that to do. Thank right. you. And if you remember your timeline you said um, by the end of the month? No, I'm talking about things that I requested back in June, July, August. All right, so our next is um, public comment. We've set aside 10 minutes for public comment. If you have something that you would like to approach the um, Board of Education about, this is your opportunity. Please um, present yourself to the front of the board, and if you would state your name, that would be terrific. I will go, I'll go with some of the guidelines. Yeah. So you go ahead, have, have a seat right there. Great. Um, so, so when doing public comment, we have a couple of guidelines to protect uh, the, the staff and the school. So to so encourage it, right? But we certainly uh, want to make sure we don't talk about people by name in public at all. We can't do that. We can't reference people by name in public. And also, if they have any concerns, that the policy is to go through a particular process where you go through teachers, uh, principals, superintendents, and so forth to do so. That, that is, that's how we do it. And also, you're not allowed to um, mention any students. <laughs> students. <laughs> so, <Done>. concepts are good. <laughs> <laughs> no, again, no, no personal learning. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. no. Right. And, um, I saw a general question, so it's not, all that stuff was for nothing, but okay. a general question. Great. And your name? Cynthia Nato. Okay. I just, can you tell me where I can get the guidelines for attendance of board members and residency requirements and who I would go through to get them? Where I would get them? Attendancy. Um, guidelines for attendance and residency yeah. for board members. Um. <laughs> well, I can, I can tell you that all the board minutes are posted online. No, no, not minutes. I'm, no. I'm getting there. And she, it, wants and, the plan. And she wants the rules. Right. So the board, you talked about attendance, attendance, mm -hmm. right? So the minutes are posted and it tells you who's attending. No, 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 the no, the requirement for attendance, like say you're a board member, uh -huh. 
and you miss five meetings, you miss oh, one meeting, good question. what's the requirements for you to be a board member as far as attendance requirements? That might be a good question. And yeah. residency requirements. Yeah, I don't school yeah. boards. Um, I don't know about school boards. Yeah, it would be New York State school boards. Yeah. You have to go through that, you don't have it here locally? New York uh, State well, school you can go online. No, I can't. Yeah, we have a board attorney that could probably research that issue and let us know. Do you know off the top of your head what the, if there's a requirement so percent wise? I guess my first question is kind of procedural. Do we typically allow a, a dialogue and public oh, comment, or do we simply yeah, allow a question to be a asked? Comment. So I, I, I'm happy to do whatever the board's will is, but I don't want to yeah. upend the process you typically use. Right, because usually um, public comment is a comment from the public. It's not a um, conversation with the public. Um, we are a meeting that's held in the public, but we are not a public meeting. Okay, so, so where do, um, I, ask, where, where do strong, I ask this question? Um, where I, would I? I would strongly suggest that you um, go to NISBA, New York State School Boards, and you can research your answers that way. Are your questions? NYSSBA. NYSS, NYSS what? BA, New York State School Boards Association. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Pro ten, it's resolved that the Board of Education appoint a clerk pro ten. <coughs> I nominate Ed oh, okay. as clerk pro tem for this meeting. Um, may I have a motion, please? Motion. Thank you. I'm sorry. Second. Okay. okay. Mark, second is I'm um, sorry, Andy. Any question or discussions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Noes, abstains? Resolution passes. All right. It's resolved that the Board of Education enter executive session to discuss the employment history of a particular person and a pending legal matter. Can I just adjust that? Okay. Person or persons in any legal matter or matters. Okay. Including the matter of. Okay. Including the matter of the application of Andrew D. Brockway as a member of the Beatmetown Central School District petition for judgment and relief pursuant of CPLR Article 78 against the Beatmetown Central School District. Board of Education, Daniel Mannix, as the superintendent of the Beatontown Central School District, and Kathy Buckley, as the Beatontown Central School District Board of Education president. May I have a motion, please? Motion. Okay. Second? Second. Okay. Jim? All right, any question or discussion? Um, are we in, well, first of all, I know that I can't attend part of executive session. Mm -hmm. Are we inviting anyone in? And am I allowed to participate in the section if we plan on bringing Jake Irvin into executive session? Um, we will cover what we can with you there. It doesn't really answer my question. I don't really have a definite, I can't, I don't have a black and white line for you. And, and I, there, think the other, there comes to I think time. the other answer to the question is yes, you're intending to invite Dean and Jake Irvin into executive session. Yes. So, with that being said, I know that I can't or shouldn't be involved in the legal matter, but I also know that there is an investigation by Mr. Gervin into the conduct of the superintendent that I think that I should be a part of. Uh, 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 we really, really okay, need so to be careful of the words we choose at this table. Okay. So, the that's a mischaracterization. Yeah, that's so, just to be clear, what Mr. Mr. mischaracterization? What Mr. Brockway indicated is not is not an accurate characterization of, of what Mr. Gerben's office has been asked to look at in, in any way, shape, or form. Um, I think perhaps the further dialogue about 
I, I would suggest to the board that the entire board go into executive session when a matter, be it the litigation that Mr. Brockway has initiated against the district or anything else, come to a point where it would be prudent for his attendance to, or anyone else's attendance not to be there, we ask that person to excuse themselves. But at this point, I would suggest the board invite the entire board, myself, Mr. Gervin, into executive session to start the dialogue on the issues you've just raised. And since I wasn't allowed to participate um, when Mr. Piscatelli briefed the board on the investigation into my misconduct or alleged misconduct, I don't think it's proper that Mr. Mannix be there when we discuss his conduct. Again, Actually, I, you I, I, I don't, I, I, I think that it would be prudent to hasten the conversation with respect to the matters that are going into executive session. And, and again, I, I would respectfully correct the board member who has spoken. This is not a matter of investigating Mr. Mannix, as it was just stated. That's simply inaccurate. So I have an email from Ross Piscatelli. Uh, again, okay. I, think, I think we're delving into yeah. executive okay. session privileged conversation at this you point. Do you think or do you know? I would highly recommend this conversation see as we go into executive session and have further discussion about it. I move the question, which means I want to vote. Okay, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Noes, abstains, resolution passes.